Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Homescapes. If you are new here and haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button and become a part of Homescapes. Today I am here to give you all the information about this plant right here. So this plant is Plumosa fern. It is also known by other names such as Asparagus fern, Lace fern or Climbing Asparagus. Though this plant is known as a fern, it is not a fern. It belongs to the Asparagus family. These plants are grown for their delicate feathery fern-like foliage and these are widely used in flower arrangements and garlands. These plants have a very thin slender stem and they have tuberous root system. This is a perennial plant and these grow up to 18 inches tall. Now let's look into its needs. So when you are choosing a pot, make sure it is neither too big nor too small for the plant. Choose a pot according to the size of the plant. I have planted mine in a 6 inch terracotta pot which is perfect for this size of plant. After choosing a pot, next to make an ideal soil mix for this plant, remember that this plant has a tuberous root system. So it needs a very light airy soil mixture which holds some moisture but is well draining at the same time. I have used equal portions of cocoa peat and sand and I have used one handful of vermi compost to make the soil pH slightly acidic just what this plant loves. As you can see this is a very loose soil mixture which will easily allow its tuberous roots to grow well. This plumosa fern plant it should be watered when the top 1 inch of soil is dry to touch. But make sure the soil isn't too wet. This plant enjoys humidity around it so you can keep it on a pebble tree. Now I'll show you how to make a pebble tree. To make a pebble tree just choose the ideal size of pot plate or any other tree and fill it with pebbles of your choice. You can fill it with water halfway up and then you place your pot of plumosa or any other plant which likes humidity on it. Also guys make sure that the water level doesn't touch the base of the pot as then the water will be absorbed by the potting soil and it will make the soil soggy and it can harm your plant. Next moving on to the sunlight needs for this plant. So this plant enjoys indirect bright light or partial shade where it receives 1 to 2 hours of morning sun. Next moving on to fertilizing this plant, you can use either organic liquid fertilizer made with cow dung manure and mustard cake or you can use a balanced liquid fertilizer like NPK 19-19-19 or NPK 20-20-20 diluted to half the strength by mixing half spoon of NPK in 1 litre of water. You can fertilize plumosa ferns once a month. Moving on to its propagation, don't try propagating it with stem cuttings. It will never develop roots. This plant is propagated by division. Once your plant is root bound, you can divide its roots and make new plants by dividing the parent plant. Now let's look into the common problems that you could face while growing this plant. The first one being yellowing of leaves. Now yellowing of leaves can be either because of overwatering or underwatering this plant or because of too much sunlight. It might sound confusing to determine the cause but it is not. In this case the first thing you have to do is check the soil. You will definitely know if it is too dry or too soggy. So try to balance the amount of water you give to the plant to keep its soil just slightly moist and avoid overwatering or underwatering it later. But if your plant is way too overwatered and its lower branches have rotten Immediately repot the plant into another pot to save it from rotting further. These plants are susceptible to root rot and ground rot, so it is necessary to keep the soil water content under check always. Now if you find the soil water content just right, then the yellowing leaves can be due to too much of sunlight. 
In this case, move your plant to a place which receives indirect bright light. The other problem is the attack of pests. Spider mites and mealybugs are the most common ones to attack this plant. To fix this, you can spray neem oil and soap water spray or you can use commercial insecticides like imidacloprid. So I think I have covered all the points regarding to this asparagus phone or lace phone. So that's all for this video guys. Do like, share and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Till then stay safe and happy. Bye guys.